Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And this morning, we have yet another amazing guest. Uh, we're going to be talking to Ali, who's calling in from the Virgin Islands. Uh, so uh, I'm really excited to talk to her from there. Uh, she's going to be sharing her unique angle on uh, content and uh, her unique niche. She's a local TV show producer, uh, and she's going to be sharing also the power of storytelling for YouTube growth. Uh, she's a mentorship client. Many of you were on the call yesterday, and you heard me talk with Dawn about the mentorship program. Uh, it's strictly and solely around accountability. Uh, and we'll touch on that a bit more today. The bottom line that I talked about yesterday was sometimes you need to hire the experts that you need to get you to the next level instead of hoping and wishing that they're already in your life, right? Most of us do not have accountability-oriented professional experts who do this for a living. We have, you know, our buddies or our girlfriends or our parents or our uncles and cousins. And we that now want to start a business and expect that we're going to have the support that we need in our life in order to help us get to the level that we want to get. And it's not realistic to expect that. As a matter of fact, what's realistic is to expect that people are going to doubt, second guess, criticize, and not understand because they do criticize and are afraid of things that they don't understand. And so if you want to get to the next level, one of the things that I've done in my life over the past decade is start hiring the experts that can help me get to the next level, whether that is in my personal life. Uh, Ali's going to be talking about sobriety today. Well, I'm sober and have been in recovery for 15 years. I, I, there was nobody in my life when I first got sober that could help me to, to, to stay sober. I had to go and I had to seek those experts, seek those coaches, those uh, therapists, those sponsors, those people who could help me. And so if you want a free accountability coaching call to have a discussion about what accountability might look like with an expert, a program that we have here inside of Legendary to help you, to uh, get on the right track and implement the information that you need, then you can email me right now. And yesterday I, I uh, interviewed Dawn, our, um, our accountability mentor, or one of them. If you want a free coaching call with her, email me at dave at legendarymarketer.com and start to be curious about the results that you could get when you start to seek out and actually hire the experts and the professionals that can help you get to the next level. No Olympian, the Olympics just ended, went to their neighbor and said, can you help me train for the Olympics? That would be insane. So why would we do that inside of our business? Well, some of us do. And then we get mad when our friends and family and neighbors and so forth aren't supportive or don't know how to help us. They shouldn't know. But somebody who's an expert and a professional and who does it every day could help. So get curious about that and email me at dave at legendarymarketer.com if you are curious and want to try to uh, look into and actually experience for free, for free. The accountability mentorship program comes at an investment, of course, but experience it. Dip your toe for free to see what that might look like, have a conversation and make a decision about what's best for you. With that being said, all the way from the British Virgin Islands, Allie, welcome to the show. Hey, Dave. Hey, everyone. Great to be here. It's uh, my pleasure to have you and welcome to the show. Uh, you are calling in from the Virgin Islands. You mentioned that your power is a little bit shaky this morning, so we'll go with the flow. We're grateful to have you on for as long as we can have you. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm so pumped to be here and everything you were saying kind of leading up to me coming on here, I was thinking, man, preach, 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 because it's so true. And I, I just have so much gratitude this morning. What 
about what I just said was true and did you also experience inside of your life as you have been building businesses? You're a producer on a TV show down there. You're also now building an online business. Did you experience some of that doubt, fear, criticism, lack of understanding from people around you? Oh, um, have you experienced some of what I just talked about on that intro and, and give us a little bit of, uh, of, of context there. And then, uh, we'll talk about how you actually got started here online and what your motivation was. Oh yeah, for, for sure. I mean, I can relate to so much of what you just said, um, with, um, with my show. So I, um, I'm the, I'm the producer and TV host of this show here in the, the US Virgin Islands. It's called B.I. Tangs. Um, I've been a journalist for over 15 years and started from learning how to open a tripod <laughs> to here's how you hold a camera and doing whatever I had to do to pay my dues and learn and grow in the business. And I began that show out of what really felt like a rock bottom. And, you know, I know we all go through rock bottoms in life and, you know, what, what comes to mind is beauty from ashes, you know, from being down and feeling really down in life, just digging in and thinking, okay, I got to do it. You know, we're just pulling, pulling really from deep within. And, you know, that connects to what, you know, you were um, sharing about too with sobriety. And for me being, I'm almost seven years sober, um, October 7th, we'll make seven years. And, you know, that also started from a very, probably one of the rockiest bottoms um, I've, I've, ever, I've ever had in my life. Um, but, you know, again, we all go through these things. And sometimes we, we reach points where we're like, I got to fight for my life here. You know, like I got dreams, I got things I want to do. And there's something deep within that says, I'm just, I'm not giving up. I'm just going to go for it. And with legendary marketer, like that's, that's how I felt. I came into um, this incredible program in January and did the 15 day challenge and then didn't execute it right away. And mm -hmm. actually, you know, kind of bringing this a little full circle, I was watching Wake Up Legendary and I heard you and I think it was Bonnie talk about the free complimentary accountability call. And I just thought to myself, bingo, like that's, that's what I need. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, just because we're successful in other areas of our lives doesn't mean that we're automatically going to come in here and uh, be successful with starting our own business, particularly in an area that's uh, new or different. Right. Online marketing is for many people like uh, learning a second language. And sometimes you need a, a, a language coach. You know, um, sometimes reading the manuals is enough. Sometimes it's not for me. And I, I'm successful in, a, in say, for example, business, but I tried for many years to get into the gym and get a workout routine and was unsuccessful. Now, that doesn't mean I'm a failure. It means I need some accountability. And so I ended up hiring a, a, a personal trainer. Not so much to teach me how to work out because I had an idea at least. I did learn some things, much more than I realized, but it was all, it was mainly just to get me to the gym. It was mainly to get me in, you know, three times a week, no matter what, rain or shine. Uh, if I canceled, I was going to pay for the session because usually I was canceling late. And uh, so I would show up. And I got into a habit and a routine of learning how to work out and learning how to show up. Um, so I'm glad that resonated with you. You're in our mentorship pro group. There's uh, a wonderful community blooming and blossoming in there of over 100 people now. And you're going to meet some amazing friends and connections. And there's a possibility that some of your longtime, lifelong friends are going to come out of that group. And our, our goal is and hope is at the end of six months, uh, you're going to look back and say, this was the biggest season of business growth I've ever had. That's our goal or one of the biggest seasons. And uh, I feel like you're well on your way to doing that right now. Um, let's talk a little bit about what got you into this online marketing world in the first place. You're a successful uh, TV 
show producer. I, I like that tings. It's kind of a, mm -hmm. it's kind of a, um, that's things for us in America. Yeah. That, yeah. T I N G S apostrophe after the S. Things. Right. It's a thing, man. It's a thing. <laughs> right. Right. So, what, uh, I mean, particularly, I'm interested about this topic and niche of sobriety. What got you motivated to want to get online and build a business in the first place? And how did you come to this conclusion that you were going to talk about sobriety? Wow. Uh, those are those two things are connected, but they came at different times. So last year, 2023, in the summer, you know, I was looking at approaching six years sober. And I'm on TV here in the Virgin Islands um, and also in the Caribbean and different US markets. Um, I had not shared publicly on social media that I was sober, mm. um, but it was something that was really stirring in my heart because one thing for me and a promise that, I mean, I, I think I've always felt this way, but certainly in sobriety is to show up as the most authentic version of myself and to do everything in my life with as much authenticity, to keep it real, to reach people, to speak what, you know, the truth that I know. And I, it was something I really wanted to, to share. And so I did, and I created a YouTube channel, Spilling the Sobriety, last summer. Mm. And it, it's, it's awesome, you know, the, the reception towards everybody hearing that I was sober has been, you know, I'm so grateful for it. Um, it was nerve wracking to share that, because, you know, but that's the thing about fear, Dave, you know, fear isn't real. You know, fear is this thing that we kind of, we feel it, it feels real, but the fear really isn't real. I mean, there was so much love on the other side of that. And so from spilling the sobriety, the YouTube channel that really kind of got the wheels turning. And I thought to myself, I really want to help people, especially women though, who, want to get sober, they want to change their life, they want radical transformation, because that's where I was when I hit rock bottom in 2017. Um, and it was actually, you know, this month is the seven year anniversary of that. It was September of 2017. I, um, I had suffered a head injury a few months prior from playing volleyball, of all things, um, got hit in the head and there you go. <laughs> that's how the universe works. And I was on a lot of pain medication. It was so hard to work. And at the time, I wasn't here in the Virgin Islands. I was living in Louisiana. And I actually wasn't even in TV news um, at that point. And I was working a sales job, but with my head injury, the, the migraines, I mean, my face would feel like it was on fire. I, I couldn't, it was hard to work. And I know my job was so, it was, they were trying to be as understanding as possible, but by September of 2017, my numbers weren't that great. They fired me. Mm. And so I thought to myself, all right, just been fired. My finances weren't good, weren't good. Um, had some, you know, had my concussions. The next day, Dave, because, you know, as, as, as we were talking about, my family is here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The very next day after being fired, a catas catastrophic Cat 5 hurricane hit St. Thomas, Ooh. direct impact, devastated everything. This was Hurricane Irma. So this Ooh. was a few weeks before Hurricane Maria. Maria also hit the Virgin Islands too. And you know, as we know, devastated Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico. So I went from getting fired, head injury, I was about to lose health insurance, broke, and I had no home to go back to. And I was living alone. That, that was rock bottom for me. And prior to all of that, you know, that year, I knew alcohol had become a bigger problem in my life. And I literally got down to my knees and was just crying life, just crying, crying the word life. And I think sometimes in life, when you've reached rock bottom, the only thing you could think of is just shouting the word life. And you're just, you're just fighting for it in that moment. And from there, got up, tried to do the next best thing. Where I'm going with this was, you know, within a week, Dave, may sound crazy, within a week, things in my life started to become restored. I went to a physical therapist. 
Um, my head felt better. And it was like, you know, feeling like I had control of my body again. And I heard the words, don't drink. Mm. And it was one of the most spiritual, powerful moments in my life. Um, and I just knew that sobriety was, was going to be my North Star. And my last sip of alcohol was on October 7th, 2017. And I, I haven't looked back since. Since then, so many things in my life, dreams, goals, um, aspirations have, have come to fruition, have come to the full. And life isn't perfect. You know, I'm, I'm you know, taking on digital marketing and I'm learning so much. And, um, you know, but I'm doing it. And sobriety has helped me do that. So to answer your question, you know, why, why am I, you know, getting into the sobriety niche and digital marketing? It all kind of like gels together in a lot of ways because this is, with digital marketing, this is how I can reach more people. Mm. This is how I can build more impact um, in addition to the YouTube channel. And, you know, sobriety is the space that I really feel called to because if I could help one one woman out there or one person, but you know, if I could help one person out there, uh, I, I mean, the feel that, that feels so good because I remember what it was like. Yeah, well, that's one of my superpowers for sure is sobriety. So I hope that you know during this conversation we can both talk about your marketing and business journey, but also as I've asked people at the beginning to become curious about what having some additional accountability in your business life may look like. I also ask that you all become curious about what cutting out some of your so-called vices in your life might look like, especially as you start this journey of entrepreneurship, how might that influence or impact your life? How much space is alcohol is drugs, and there's a plethora of vices that we have as human beings from porn addiction to tobacco addiction to you know drug addiction to gambling addiction to lots of things in between there's i think over if i'm if i'm uh, you know fact check me on this but over 400 12 step groups of different topics in the world. Uh, there's so many different things that people feel addicted to. People feel addicted to people. Uh, we feel addicted to unhealthy and abusive relationships. We feel addicted to, um, many of us are, are codependent, which is a kind of a form of being addicted to people pleasing. Yeah. So, you know, Obviously, there's some low-hanging fruit, and my recovery started off with looking at the low-hanging fruit. Okay, what's what's dominating my life? What's causing me the most unmanageability? Well, for me, it was pretty obvious. I mean, it was drugs, you know, and it caused me legal issues. It caused me uh, health issues. It caused me the inability to be able to hold a job, uh, have a job make money, take care of myself or my children. Um, your symptoms may not as be as drastic as mine. You know, I was a street drug addict from about 15 years old to about 24 when I got clean. However, my dad was a functional alcoholic for 30 years of his life. He actually got sober six months after I got clean. I actually crawled up onto his doorstep and asked him to help me save my life. And I slept on his couch for six months watching him, you know, go to work a construction job and come home and drink an 18 pack every night. And finally he just was like, you know, wow, I got a problem. My son said, you know, and I'm not going to tell his story for him, but he's been sober now for 15 years. And so it doesn't matter whether you're living on the under a bridge. In this case, maybe alcohol, drugs, some sort of a toxic gambling or relationship addiction is keeping you from really following through with your business goals. And nowadays, I'll tell you, it's cool to be sober, people. It is becoming cool it is. to get your shit together. 
and not be hanging out bellied up at a bar or smoking pot until you're just stupefied, chilling out, relaxed. If anybody knows about marijuana culture, it's it's you guys down in the islands, right? But, <laughs> yeah. but you know, that's not very conducive to building a business and staying focused and being productive. And so I just invite those of you who are listening to this to kind of take inventory of your life and ask yourself, is something holding me back that I can actually control, which is, yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, I can't imagine my life without having a glass of wine or a drinking beer every night or smoking pot every day. But how much is that actually holding me back and who might be hiding under that layer as I peel back that layer of the onion? What version of myself might be hiding and being held back because I'm dedicating so much energy in dumbifying myself down with this particular substance? Does that resonate with you? Uh, everything, everything, a, a thousand, hundred thousand percent. I knew there was stuff, Dave, that I had to get to. I had to work on in myself. You know, I was on this hamster wheel and I, I knew I was not going in the right direction. I knew quitting alcohol would at least give me the finally the space, the opportunity to look within, you know, we all got stuff, we all got baggage, you know, all got shit. <laughs> and, but giving up alcohol, I could finally truly look at my shit, you know, and, 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 and take ownership of it and work on it and working on myself, working on my mindset, building, building a whole new lifestyle where I could be a better, higher version of myself. Now I can start to look towards the future and, and say, okay, what is it that I really want to do in life? Because it wasn't, it wasn't the sales job that I was in. Where do I want to be geographically? Who do I want to be around? What, I mean, everything, relationships. I mean, everything. I mean, I, I, I couldn't get there until I got rid of the stuff. So when you say, yes, you know, like, look at what your vices are. Look what's holding you back. Look what's taking up space in your life. It may not even be dramatic. It could be just binging on Netflix, you know, which, hey, been there too, right? Um, but look at what's taking up space in your life that's holding you back. Because it for me, I mean, because I can only speak for myself, but I think this might resonate. It's really a form of self self-sabotaging. You're afraid, at least I was, maybe others too, you know, who can relate, but I was afraid of being the best version. I wanted to be the best version. I was afraid of being that version because what if I try and what if I fail? Then what? Then my ego and my heart is trying to keep me safe. So if I don't try, then I'll never fail. But if I never try, then I'll, I'll never succeed either. You see? So it's like, um, it, it giving up alcohol for me was being able to see the forest from the trees, kind of taking the foggy glasses off. The version of my, it's funny, Dave, when I scroll back through pictures, like old, old pictures from 2015, 2016, and I, I look and I'm like, wow, that was a, that was a whole different woman, <laughs> you know, this, yeah. just, just everything. And, uh, and now, you know, this year I said to myself, I want to change my life this year. You know, I have my show, VI Tings, which um, I, I, I love. And, you know, it's a great way to celebrate my culture here in the, the Virgin Islands. But I want, I want to do more than, than that. And I knew sobriety was a space I wanted to move into. And so signing up for our accountability group, I mean, I just, I think I told Bonnie in our call, I just said, look, Bonnie, I'm all in. I'm doing this. And, and yeah, I didn't do anything for about four or five months, but okay, that was then. This is now, and I'm not going to, I'm not gonna squander this time. I'm not gonna let four or five months goes by, go by and in January or February think to myself, all right, now I'm gonna start. I mean, and, it, and, and if you do start in January, February, okay, that's your journey. But like I said to myself, no, I'm gonna, I'm, not, I'm gonna use 2024, I'm all in, I'm gonna do it. And 
Dave, what I feel right now, um, and this is my, my prayer and hope to anybody out there um, who's watching, you feel that fire. You feel that I'm, I'm not, not going to give up type of thing, you know? And yes, there are some tougher moments. I was posting on TikTok last night. The power went out again. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at my phone. I'm thinking, okay, I hope my phone battery doesn't, doesn't die before I can post on TikTok or, you know, Instagram or whatever. Actually, it, 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 was, it, it was Instagram, not TikTok. But anyway, but it's, a, it's just a, a, a deep within. I, I'm, just, I'm just not giving up and I'm, I'm going to do it. And yeah. knowing what my why is. Well, there's a lot of fear at the beginning of a business when the money's not rolling in right away and bills are still coming and we're thinking, okay, what is, is this, you know, our brains kind of do basic math and say, is this time equating to money? You know, we really think like we've been trained to think, I want to say that again. We think exactly how we've been trained to think. Good little boys and good little girls getting good little grades, getting good little jobs. You work, you get paid. You work, you get paid. The paycheck is the drug that keeps you broke. It keeps you going back. It's sort of like crack. It's highly addictive. The boss gives you a paycheck. You keep coming back. The boss gives you a paycheck. You keep coming back. Now I want to start a business. Okay. Shit. I'm, I'm buying stuff. This is foreign. First of all, I'm buying stuff. I never bought anything for a job. I never invested in any education or coaching or anything for a job. Hold on a second. I'm supposed to get trained for a job. Now, all of a sudden I'm, I'm working and I'm not getting that weekly paycheck. Whoa, this feels weird. This doesn't make sense. Why am I doing this? Anxiety's piling up. Then, to add insult to injury, as we're talking about, whew, I need a drink. I need a joint. You know, I need a pill. I need, I need to go gamble, or I need to go, I need to go to the bar. I need a night out. Netflix, Whatever. Netflix. <laughs> I, I need to go watch, you know, binge on some Netflix, you know, and, and, and honestly, it's like, if Netflix is your, is your, is your vice then and, and you know, I'm going to give you a pass on that one. Honestly, as long as you're doing something else, you know, but it's like, we can't be so hard on ourselves. Net, I never woke up in the morning unless I stayed up too late. Now this is a problem. One of the things that I realized that if, if you want to talk about a, a problem, an unmanageable behavior, I was watching TV and falling asleep on my couch and not getting good sleep. That was a problem. That actually was a destructive behavior that I had to change, right? So if, if watching TV into the night is not allowing you to get sleep, then, then that's a problem. But you know what? entrepreneurship is a doorway when you're building a business that's going to show you all of your weaknesses and it's going to highlight where you need to grow. So is sobriety. Sobriety and entrepreneurship for me has, have gone hand in hand because once I clear away all of the, the, the medication and all of the kind of distracting things, and now I'm sitting here with myself and my feelings and my mind, I get to see what really is the kind of stock version of David? Not, without all the upgrades, the 22-inch wheels, the big loud sound system, the, the, the candy paint, <laughs> you know, all the extras, right? What's just the stock box version of Dave, right? Okay, wow. Whoo! I got a lot of fear. I got a lot of anxiety. I have catastrophic thinking. I have racing thoughts. I have limiting beliefs. Oh, shit. I can either choose to work through that or I can try to find a workaround. And the workaround is, eh, you know what? This is too much. Let me go grab a drink. Or this is too much. Let me go grab some Netflix and fall asleep on the couch. But entrepreneurship, even if you're not going to delve into sobriety, if you don't, you know, 
sobriety is a choice. Entrepreneurship is also a choice. But many of you are here already starting your entrepreneurship journey. Embrace what entrepreneurship brings up in your life and lean into it instead of run away from it. It's kind of like the accountability thing. It's like, oh, shit, I'm starting a business and I can't hold myself accountable to take the actions every day. What a revelation. What a thing for me to know about myself is that I have a hard time with accountability. Maybe that's why I keep going back to shitty jobs to have somebody else do the thinking for me is because I can't hold myself. So I need to work on that. If I'm ever going to be more free, then I need to address the fact that I can't hold myself accountable. I got no discipline. That's going to take some time. Maybe I need to get some help on that. Maybe I need to hire somebody to help me with accountability. Same thing with sobriety. Thankfully, I got sober before I started my business. I actually got sober, worked construction with my dad for a year and was like, this sucks. I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. And so I started, you know, delving into entrepreneurship and kind of stumbled my way onto the Internet and, and learned these skills back, you know, 15, 14, 15 years ago. But friends, you know, we talk about this mentorship program that we've launched and it's been a real hit with a lot of our clients. It's a six month program. My question is, is if you really addressed your life in the most. The biggest weaknesses in your personality for over the next six months, instead of constantly avoiding them like you may have done your entire life, avoiding the fact that you have no discipline or little discipline, avoiding the fact that you aren't following through, avoiding the fact that you're afraid to put yourself out there on the internet or on camera because you're afraid of people. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Instead of avoiding, what if the next six months you said, look, I'm going to run towards everything I'm afraid of, and I'm going to do everything that I can to try to become the absolute best version of myself. These six months, I'm going to suffer through it. Now, what you'll find is once you start to make that commitment to suffering at the beginning and getting uncomfortable, that suffering is going to turn into breakthroughs. You're going to realize, oh shit, just like me. When I first got sober, I was like, I'm going to have to, I can never drink or drug again. Life is going to be so boring. <laughs> and then I realized as I had 30, 60, 90 days clean, holy shit. I'm having more fun than I've ever had in my entire life. Bingo. And the same thing will happen with your business if you make the decision to get uncomfortable for the first. It's going to be uncomfortable. When you, when you press post on that video that you've been avoiding posting or you continue to market even when you're having financial insecurity and thinking that it's not working out or when you you know, push yourself to be more polarizing in your marketing or be more vulnerable or, or do something that you feel uncomfortable doing. Yes, it's going to feel like somebody's poking your eyeballs out with a fork at first. But eventually, within 30 days or so, you're actually going to have started to develop something called self-esteem and confidence, and identity. And you're going to be like, holy shit, this actually feels good. This isn't as scary as I thought I would. Who give a little, little, little criticizing comment? Get out of here. Get off of me, you I'll little mosquito. Back. Get off of me, you little okay. mosquito, right? And you're going to just start moving and grooving. And all of a sudden, you're going to look back and you're going to say, why in the did I wait so long to start making some of these changes and be a little bit more bold in my life? Anyways, I'm ranting. Does the this idea of kind of getting uncomfortable to find a new comfort level, even if you have to suffer in the first few weeks or months to find your new self, does that resonate with you? Totally, totally. And, and like you were sharing, sobriety, and entrepreneurship and it could you know for other people it could be other things but there's parallels in that the first month of not drinking there were a lot of tears 
it was not comfortable. I had all kinds of racing thoughts and, and everything. It was, it, it was hard. I mean, I could talk forever on that, but you know, story for another day. In entrepreneurship, you know, when you up level in life and you're trying to take your life to the next level, it, you're right, it's gonna feel, it's gonna feel a little sticky because you're doing something different. If it didn't feel sticky, it probably, it probably would have already happened, like, you know? But when our nervous systems, and that's a big thing for me in sobriety, in life, and in entrepreneurship is regulating my nervous system. When your nervous system is getting acclimated to something bigger, something different, something new, it's gonna take a little while for all of that to acclimate. For me, it's the big thing is just being consistent. Since joining our accountability group uh, in this last month, I posted on Instagram twice a day on my Spilling the Sobriety account. Now, you know, it's not, can't say, oh, I got thousands and millions of followers, no. But it's the consistency that I know is going to, I'm building something here, you know? That's it, I'm, I'm building, I'm building. And it doesn't always happen like that, and in fact, Another story for, for another day, day, Dave, but I don't, I almost don't even want everything to happen all at once because I want to grow. I want to, I want to be ready for it when it all happens. <laughs> it's so true. It is so true. I mean, oh. You're not ready. I love that. Thank you. I've, I've rarely heard anybody say that. It's that's true wisdom that you're speaking right now. Yeah. And, and. Here's, I know, I know two things it's going to come. And two, I know what I want to do, which is make impact and just, and just be out here in these streets talking and sharing. It's good. It's, it's going to happen. You know, the, the thing about it is um, for me is I, my challenge for me has been that consistency. I've given up before I've started things and I haven't yeah. followed through. You so this accountability. This accountability group is, uh, and shout out Bonnie, that, you know, that's my coach. And I also have another coach, Michelle Garavito, who's from, who's in our legendary marketer family as well. Um, two amazing women coaches, ph phenomenal people. It's this, for me, it's consistency and not giving up. That, that's where I know for my nervous system right now, I'm, that's the muscle I'm building. And keeping on reaching out, Posting on TikTok now, getting my 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 email list together, and, and and all of those things, and I'm making progress in those areas. But it's it's the it's the consistency, so that after six months, like you said, you know, I can look back and think, wow, like I did that, I I did that, and and now going into 2025, I'm rocking and rolling. So I mean, my my prayer. Yeah, I mean, in in. You know, what you're saying right here in terms of the fact that you're not ready for, most of us are not for some massive business and tons of traffic and leads. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really about building a foundation at the beginning to even prepare yourself for the success that's coming your way. And what does that look like? Well, it just looks like testing things out in small sample sizes at the beginning. It's like any good sales funnel. You know, if, if you put out a video and, or you started getting millions of, of visitors into your sales funnel and didn't even check to see if it was working correctly, then all of that traffic would be a waste. Similarly to how, um, it, it, you know, it, it if you had millions of dollars or even tens of thousands of dollars rolling in at the beginning, now some of you may say, well, that'd be a, a dream, Dave. Yeah. And what's better is to be ready for it and have the systems in place for you to be able to manage that and, you know, be able to invest it appropriately and uh, not, you know, most people, if they, made a bunch of money in their first couple of months in business, especially online, they would, they would go in, they would spend it on dumb stuff and it, it would all be gone. And then they'd be frustrated that all of their money was gone. 
Um, not to say you're not going to make some dumb decisions no matter when you start making money. But the point is, is I love this idea of having a realistic expectation. Look, I'm going to use these first few months to build a foundation to really kind of learn to build the habits instead of expecting that the money is going to come just because I'm now deciding that I'm going to do something. The world is not, you know, the world does not cater to our needs the moment that now we decide that we're going to start. It's like we have to earn the inertia and the respect and the, and the, and, you know, the momentum of the world by actually showing the world that we're going to be here, rain or shine, um, and they should start listening because we're not going away. You know, there's a lot of businesses who have been in business for a long time, and you may think that they automatically had tons of success at the beginning, but you know the glory, not the story. You don't know what it was like for them their first year or two, the rejection, the work they had to put in. And we all have to come through that same front door, man. Stop looking for windows. Stop looking for back doors. Stop looking for shortcuts. And just be willing to put in the work because I can tell you that one of the things about building real confidence in your life is that if you actually do it by putting in the work and earning it instead of it being handed to you, you will actually build real confidence that will carry you through life versus being essentially an imposter and getting lucky. And the reason why I believe a lot of people who win the lotto are broke not too long after they win the lotto is because they didn't really earn the money. They just got lucky. And so they, you know, easy come, easy go. I didn't really earn it. So screw it. I'm going to go out and I'm going to blow it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I, I have, I have conflicting feelings about having this money. I feel like an imposter. I just could imagine that there's a lot of internal conflict around just winning a bunch of money. Whereas if you earn the money through putting in the work and going through the initial suffering of getting uncomfortable and finding sort of your new groove, you're going to have a lot more appreciation when that first dollar comes in. You're going to have a lot more appreciation when you make that first 10,000, you have that first $10,000 a month. You're going to be a lot more hesitant when you get that money to be spending that money and blowing that money on dumb stuff because you just worked your ass off to earn that money. And so instead of hoping and wishing that you're going to get lucky and win something, get excited about the process, fall in love with the process, fall in love with the idea of building real self-esteem and confidence. It's the same way that you get sober. I know you probably have heard this one day at a time. Yep. <laughs> yep. One yep. day at a time. There's no other way to do it there. I mean, I know this is common sense, but it's like, how do you build success? How do you have success? One day at a time, one video at a time. That that's yeah. how it's done. And you may need to fill in some of those cracks with some education, with some accountability, with some eliminating some destructive behaviors out of your life, like getting sober. These are all things that I've done and most successful people I know have done. I've had to get some education. I've had to hire some accountability. It sure as hell helped to be sober. If I didn't do any one of those three things, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at. But that's been the sacrifice that I've made in order to earn the success that I have that nobody can take away from me. And I'll tell you what, that's a damn good feeling. And it gives me the confidence, which is the thing that most of you are lacking right? You're lacking confidence because you feel imposter syndrome because you haven't gone through the suffering. And then you medicate and numb out with whatever your vice is when it's not going the way that you want it to go. And you need to commit to going through the valley of desperation and, and, and despair at the beginning. One of the things that I learned in recovery was the gift of desperation. The gift of desperation, my friends, is one of, the most, habit. <laughs> uh, one of the most powerful gifts. If you're feeling desperate right now, you are, you are blessed, not cursed. You, it's all about how you see that. Maybe you see that desperation as I'm pathetic. But the truth is, is that desperation, God, the universe, whatever you believe, 
has put you in this, this very fragile, vulnerable place of feeling desperate so you can show yourself what you're made out of and that you can humble yourself to actually do what you need to do and, and, and take the steps that are required in order to get to where you want to get to. That desperation is not a curse. That desperation is a gift that may make you become willing to do some things that you've never done to get some things that you've never had. Yep. Dave, darkest before the dawn. It is darkest before the dawn. And that and that dawn is the miracle that you've been waiting for. Straight up, straight up. Seven years ago, it was dark. It, it was dark. And the miracle was sobriety. That was really where I feel like a lot of my adult life has, has begun. And I, you know, I had done great things prior to that, you know, you know, TV jobs. I had an agent, won national awards. And, 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 and it's not about the achievements, right? But, you know, when you, when you're desperate, man, um, there's just something, there's just, there's a, there's a fire that, 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 that starts. So you, 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 it doesn't feel good, right? It's hard. It is hard. But if you can, if anybody's listening, and I know a lot of people are listening to this, but if this is resonating with you, just think like, if you are going through that rock bottom, just hold on to the thought that this is when your miracle shows up. This is, this is the breakthrough that you've been waiting for. Hold on, hold on. You're in the cooker. There is something great in store for you. And it's super close and it's, and it's big. It's like, the what feels rocky, what feels dark is almost equivalent to this amazing, beautiful blessing that is right there for your life. So just, just, just keep going. Um, you know, everything, everything you said, Dave, you know, it's just really, and I, I also wanted to add too, like, if it feels uncomfortable, if it feels like, man, I've been putting in a lot of work and you're, and you're early in your, in your journey, like, like for me right now, I, th this is what it should feel like, you know? This is what it should feel like. Yeah, I think for me, looking back at times where I've given up, I didn't always realize that. I thought, oh, this is hard. Oh, maybe I'll just take a couple days off. You don't know. You're right where you're supposed to be if it feels hard and feels sticky. You're, that's it, that's it. Keep, keep, keep going, just keep, keep going. And knowing I have my calls with Bonnie um, every week um, really, really helps. For me, um, you know, I um, I was a college athlete. Golf was my sport. My my first big dream in life was to be a professional golfer. Um, and going back to what you were saying earlier, like just 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 keep just keep going, keep doing the stuff that even if it feels hard or whatever. I mean, I did thousands of golf drills. You know, club over my back, golf worked on my swing. I mean, I did hours hours in the hot sun sweating, you know, just like burning up, <laughs> you know, just so, I mean, and that wasn't, that was hard, but it got me to championships. It got me to being ranked. It got me to being a college athlete, you know? Um, and it took from age six to 18 years and years getting to that point. And so what, for me, when I think of that journey, and I also think of sobriety, you know, and then in my entrepreneurship journey, I know, I know what it feels like when things don't feel comfortable. And now what I'm telling myself is, all right, yeah, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Just stay in, stay in the course, little golf, golf analogy there, but yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, unbelievable point. And I love, I love it. I love it. And we're going to leave it there. This has been an hour of power and I uh, am so grateful for this conversation with you. And I hope that this, if anybody else got something out of this, wonderful. But my hope is, is that you see the light that you are here from this experience and use this as a, you know, as a, as a jumping off point to continue to run with your business, your message, your sobriety, the path that you're on. People love you. People are, are so fired up from this conversation this morning. I'm inspired. And uh, Ali, uh, you, my friend, you stay legendary. And I'll see you back here in a couple of months to get an up, another update if that's cool with you.
the honor would be would be mine again. Thank you, Dave, so much for all you do and so much love to everyone out there. All right, Allie, we'll talk to you later. All right, my friends, what a uh, what a conversation. I mean, there you have it. You never know what you're going to get on this show. I certainly don't. Totally unplanned, totally unscripted, absolutely from the heart. And uh, I am loving that you all are loving it. Thank you for the amazing comments. That really is 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 fuel for us here. And and it's really wonderful when you're giving so much amazing kudos and thanks and support and love to the guest. I uh, I love that. I love that for our guest. I love that about you all. Thank you for being a supportive, amazing uh, group here that is uh, just absolutely just the, the most wonderful people to work around and be on this journey with. So thank you. Uh, you can you can uh, want to give you a couple of just calls to action and reminders here at the end. So listen closely. OK. If any of you are feeling called that you want to step your game up and get some accountability or at least experience what having an accountability mentor might look like, you can email me directly at Dave at legendarymarketer.com. Okay. You can just, you don't have to say anything in the email, accountability call, uh, uh, interested in accountability, just the word accountability in it, uh, coaching. I'll know what you're talking about. And I will CC in one of our accountability mentors. Okay. Uh, we have amazing, an amazing, very small group. We've taken our absolute best people in our company. We do not outsource our accountability coaching to some call center or some outside people who we don't know. These are the top salespeople, executives, leaders inside of our company that we've gone to and specifically asked them to be accountability mentors to give you, our clients, the same value, leadership, and accountability that they've brought to our company in order to help us to grow and get to where we're at. So we're giving you the best of the best, okay? Uh, many of you have seen these interviews with Eric, with Bonnie. I interviewed Don yesterday. These are the best of the best people. We'll give you a free complimentary accountability coaching call so you can experience what that process will look like. And then we'll give you the information and you can decide whether you want to take part in that. It's an amazing group. Ali's a part of that group as well. So take me up on that if you're feeling called or like that might be useful or valuable to you. you just email me at dave at legendarymarketer.com. Just free accountability coaching call. You know, what it, you can, one word will do. I'll understand what you mean. Um, Allie was such an inspiration this morning. You can follow her on TikTok and Instagram at Spilling the Sobriety. She's also got a YouTube channel, Spilling the Sobriety. Okay. If 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 that sobriety message resonated with you, then continue to plug into her, her content, because being inspired to get sober or even cut down on some of the vices that you have and you can fill in the blank. Maybe it's pot, maybe it's some other drug, maybe it's food, maybe it's Netflix, as she said. Uh, maybe it's a relationship that's toxic that you feel addicted to. Maybe it's alcohol, whatever it is. Imagine what your life might be like once you can get through the shitty part of withdrawing from it, but how free you might be without it. How free, how free you might be without it. The other thing is we can help hold you accountable inside of our accountability mentorship group over a six month period to help you to stay accountable to your goals, business and personal. Consider that as well. Uh, again, if you want a free accountability coaching call, just email me at dave at legendarymarketer.com. If you want to re-listen to this show, powerful one to re-listen to. This, this was one that you want to put in the, in the, in the back pocket. Uh, it'll be live here right on this Facebook page, okay? The other place it'll be live is we upload all of our audios on all the major pod podcast platforms. Just type in Wake Up Legendary, and you'll be able to, be able to find those. I want to thank Allie again for an amazing episode. Ah, jeez. I mean, that thing, I'm ready to throw a dead gum table in here. I'm so fired up. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. Be great. Be blessed. Be legendary. Get out of here. Peace.